Hey, what's up creators today? We're going to be showing you how we can set up a third person character with animations inside of Unreal Engine. That being said, we're going to be taking animations that have been exported from Mixamo, importing them into Unreal Engine, and then setting up an animation blueprint and all of the controls so our character can move around, walk, and just generally look awesome. And we got a fantastic character for this. You're able to download all of these animations and the character in the link in the description down below. Before starting this tutorial, make sure you do go ahead and download that. For now though, let's go ahead and jump into Unreal Engine and import these animations. So if you have downloaded the folder that I have given you, you should have a couple of files. First and foremost, we should have our vampire or our character as a FBX file. Then we're going to have all of the animations associated with this. So the very first thing that we're going to be doing is taking this character model, so the physical representation of the character here, and importing that in. Then after that, we're going to be taking all of the animations and importing those also. That being said, inside of Unreal Engine, what I want you to do is just right click and add a new folder and we're just going to give it the name character. Open this up and then I want you to right click and create another folder and we're just going to be giving this the name mesh. Inside of here, this is where we're going to be taking our character and importing it. To do this, really straightforward, find vampire a underscore lust. It's the FBX file and then drag and drop it into your content browser to import it. There's a couple of really important settings here that we need to go through. First and foremost, we need to make sure this is a skeletal mesh, so it comes in with all of the bones and it can be animated. We do want the geometry, so make sure the import mesh is turned on. Make sure no skeleton is selected as we're going to be creating a brand new skeleton for this. Import animations, at this time we're going to be leaving this to false because we're just importing the character. And then with everything else, we can leave this the way that it is, making sure that we create new materials and we do do a search so it brings in all the textures and makes our character look fantastic. Once we've done this, we're just going to go ahead and press import all and this is going to import in our character. And we can test this in just a second. If we go into our content browser now, we can find vampire and we can see we've got one with the purple marker here which is a skeletal mesh. We can double click on this to open it up and with that we can now see our character in all of its glory. And this looks fantastic. So at this point we now have our character and it looks beautiful. What we're now going to do is show you how we can import all of the animations that we have and then with those animations, just make sure that they're assigned to this correct skeleton, or in this case, the correct vampire. Let's do that. To do this, what we're going to do is go back to our character folder and we're going to create a brand new folder and give it the name animations. Open this up and then what we're going to do within the folder that I gave you, we're going to take all of the animations, idle, run, slash, slash and walk, and we're just going to be taking those and again, dragging and dropping them into the engine to import them. The process here is going to be a little bit different. The reason why is because we need to make sure that we're importing animations. And with this, we need to make sure that we're using the skeleton that we just created. To do this, go to mesh and skeleton. Inside of here, if we scroll down, we're going to be able to find our vampire skeleton we just created. Then we're going to leave all of the settings exactly as they are. One thing that you're going to want to do when you're working with animations, make sure that import translation and rotation are all set to zero, 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 and zero. Once that's done, go ahead and press import all, and that's going to import in our character animations, and we're going to be able to check those out in just a second. Okay, now that these have imported, we can see we've got all of our animations here. Idle, run, slash, slash, and our walk. What I want you to do is double click on each of these just to test them out to make sure they're all looking okay and they're using the character that we provided you with. If they're not looking correct or they're not using the correct character, just go ahead and go back to the beginning of this video and just copy that process again. But I can see we've got my character and he looks phenomenal. 
So now that we have our character and our animations, we can actually take a look at bringing this into a third person Unreal Engine project. Now, for the purpose of this video, what I've already done here is I've already created a third person project. And with that, I have a mannequin and I can run around and I have some basic controls. So what we're gonna be doing with that is we're gonna be taking that, replacing the default Unreal Engine mannequin and setting up an animation blueprint to control all the animations and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna be doing that. We're gonna be replacing that mannequin. So back inside of Unreal Engine, what I want you to do is I want you to go over to your third person folder and your blueprints. And inside of this, we should be able to find our character. If you can't, you might find that that is somewhere slightly different. You might be able to find that this is anywhere within the project, depending on the version that you've got. A really easy way for us to find this is to use the blueprint class filter. So if we go to content, go to filter and turn on blueprint class, if we scroll down, eventually we're gonna be able to find BP underscore third person character. This is our existing character. We can see this if we open this up, go to our viewport and you're gonna be very familiar with this. I know this is the correct one because if I go ahead and press play, this is the character that I'm going to be running around as. We're gonna be replacing this. So open that up. Inside of here, in the components panel in the top left hand corner, we can see all of the actors that make up this blueprint and this character. Inside of here, we can see we've got mesh or character mesh. This is what we're gonna be changing. So we're gonna select this, and then in the details panel on the right hand side, you can see here we've got skm underscore quinn underscore simple. We're gonna be changing this to our vampire. And just like that, we now have our vampire character here. There's no animations associated with that, but if you go ahead and press compile, minimize this and press play, we can now see we're able to move around as our vampire. So we've now replaced the skeletal mesh or the geometry for our character. Let's go ahead and show you now how we can set up an animation blueprint, which is actually going to tell Unreal Engine which animation it should be playing and when. Again, really straightforward, follow along with this tutorial and just in a minute, in about five minutes, we're going to have a character that can move around and it's going to look awesome. Okay, so back inside of Unreal Engine then, Inside of your character folder that you created with your animations, what I want you to do is go back to that. And then in the content browser here, I want you to right click and add in a animation blueprint. An animation blueprint is just going to allow us to have different states and control all the logic for what animation should be playing and when using blueprints. So I'm gonna create that and then I'm going to select the correct skeleton for this. This animation blueprint works specifically for our vampire character that we're creating. So select that and then press create. We're going to give this the name animbp underscore vampire. And then we're going to double click on this to open it up. This is our animation blueprint editor. We have our output posed here, which is going to give us the result. This is what the engine and the character is going to see. But to control that, we're gonna be using what's called a state machine. We can add one of these by right clicking and typing in state machine. We can then click on it once to rename it and we're just gonna give this the name animations. And then we're gonna take the animation pose output from this and put it into the result. And then we're gonna press compile. Now it's gonna give us a warning because we've not actually put any animations or states within this state machine. To do this, just double click on that state machine. And then from entry, what we're gonna do is simply just have one state for now. So drag out from that, add a state, and then the state we're gonna have is simply locomotion. That's just going to be our movement. Once we've done this, we can then double click on that output animation pose and inside of here, we can then take an animation in our asset browser and we can put it in. So let's test this out and put in the idle animation. If we go ahead and compile this, you can see in the top left hand corner, 
our character is going to do its idle. The only issue with that is it's going to be doing the idle all of the time. You're not going to be able to see it in the game just yet, but we're going to need to do something a little bit more. And we'll talk about that now. So that extra thing that I wanted to talk about that we're going to need to have is called a animation blend space. It's basically just going to blend between different animations depending on the speed of the character. So blending between our idle where he's standing still, then our walking when he's moving slowly and our run when we're moving very, very fast. Let's show you how you can set that up. So what I want you to do back in this animations folder right click, go to animation and add in a animation blend space 1D. Choose the vampire skeleton and just call this BS underscore locomotion. And then double click on this to open it up. Again, we have our character, but inside of here we have a graph where we can see um, the, the axis. So we can see the speed going from zero to 100 here. It's not quite correct. So what we need to do is in our asset details, we need to change this. Go to horizontal axis and we're going to name this speed so we know what we're working with. Then our minimum and maximum values. The minimum value is going to be zero. That's the slowest the player can move. And we also know the character can move at a maximum speed of 600 centimeters per second. I know this because that's set within the third person character movement component under our max walk speed, which we can see here. Or in this case, it's actually 500. I was wrong. So I'm going to set this to 500. But whatever your maximum walk speed is, that is what should be going into here. That being done, what we now have at the bottom is our graph. We can see we've got a value going from zero to 500. And we can see this is for our speed. And what we can do now is actually take animations and plot them along this axis. So I'm going to take my idle animation and I'm going to click and drag and drop that to the zero point. And now you can see at zero, he's going to be doing the idle. I can then take my walk and I can put that at around 50 speed. And I can also then take my run and I can put that at my 500 speed. And now Unreal Engine is going to automatically blend between these animations depending on the value of that speed. I can test this by holding down control and left click, which is then going to allow me to move along my axes and I can see how my character is going to look doing that. So at zero, it's going to be idling. He then goes into a bit of a slow walk. And as I get my speed up to 500, you can see it's doing the run as it should. That's our animation blend space up and running. And with that, we can then go into our animation blueprint. And instead of just using one single animation, that's where we can now hook up BS underscore locomotion into our output animation pose within our locomotion state. So locomotion and blend space. The only thing with this is it's asking for a speed value. This speed value is something that we need to take from the third person character. And we've got to do a little bit of blueprint to get that information and bring it into this animation blueprint class. And this process is going to be exactly the same for if we're finding out if the character's attacking or anything like that that we need to implement into our animations. But for now, we're just going to communicate to our third person character and just ask it what the speed is. So let's do that. So the way that we're going to be doing this is we're going to go over to our event graph and then inside of here, we're going to be able to find event blueprint update animation. From here, what we're going to be doing is casting to the third person character. We can find this by simply dragging out and typing in cast to third person character. This just says, hey, I want to talk to you. And with that, we can get some values from it. Object wildcard, set this to try get pawn owner. If it's not there, drag out, try get pawn owner. Then press compile. And this is going to successfully communicate. What we do need to do anytime we're casting, we need to drag out from this and we need to check to see if this is valid. 
So use this is valid node here with a question mark from the execution pin to see that because we're only going to try and get the information if this is a valid object and the cast or the communication has been successful. So if it's not valid, we're just going to do nothing. But if it is, then what we're going to do as third person character, we're going to get velocity. So get velocity. If you can't find it, you might have to scroll down. And our velocity is almost like our speed. And then with this, we're simply going to promote this to a variable. And we're going to give this the name speed. Set the variable type in the bottom left corner down to the type float. Feel free to press change variable type as we've not done anything with that just yet. If you've got a broken link like this, hold down Alt and left click to break that and then hook it up again. But you're going to notice here that we can't directly hook that up. And that's because this velocity is a type of data which is not supported by a float. And that's where we need to do vector length, which is just going to convert that into a float that we can work with. And then hook this up so it is valid into our speed. Go ahead and hit compile, and this should be working. If this is not working correctly, feel free to delete that and then take our set our speed down there in the bottom left, set the speed and hook it up just like that. And again, put it into speed. Press compile, no errors, no warning, but just make sure your code looks exactly like I've got here. What we're then gonna do is within our locomotion state, we can now get a reference to that speed and then lastly, put it in and press compile. So now the animation blueprint knows what speed we're doing and it can play the animation accordingly. With this, I can now test this by going to my anim preview editor, go to my speed and simply take this and increase it. And you can see in the preview, whether that's zero or 50 or 500, the animation is going to blend and play correctly. Now that we have the correct blending and the correct speed and animations going on, what we can now do is attach this animation blueprint to our character so we can try this out. This last step only takes about 30 seconds. Let's hop in and see our character come to life. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna go back to our third person character. And again, we can find this by using the filter or just typing in BP underscore third person character double click on this and then select your character mesh. In our character mesh, we now need to determine the animation class or the animation blueprint rather. So animation mode, set this to use animation blueprint and animation class. We can then use animbp underscore vampire. Hit compile and it's now going to use the animation blueprint and all the variables and data you set up. Press play. And you can see now, as I start running, it is going to play the correct animation. And with that, there's a lot going on here and it looks really awesome. If you have any kind of snapping like I have there, that's a really, really easy fix. You can do this within the BS underscore locomotion and we can just change that smoothing time and I can set this to something like 0.5 if I wanted to. Press play. And you can see now it's a lot smoother and we have our character, we have animations and it feels great. Now that we've done all of that, we now successfully have a character that we've imported into Unreal Engine and we have animations set up, movement set up and it looks fantastic. I'd love to see what you guys are able to do with this. If you'd like to download more characters and more animations, you can do that on Mixamo. It's completely free. If you just want to use this character, by all means, go ahead and do that. But be sure to share what you're doing in our Discord server. Also, with that, I'd love to hear what you're doing. Let us know in the comments down below what you're able to create with these animation systems. That's it for this video, though. I hope you have enjoyed it. As always, stay awesome, keep creating. Virtus, signing out. <laughs>